Hi, and welcome to some Time in the Word with Richmond Hill Community Church. It is so great to greet you today as we clue up our current teaching series, Dinner with Jesus. Throughout this series, we have been stepping into moments when Jesus sat at tables surrounded by people from all walks of life. And what may have seemed like simple meals have turned into moments of profound teaching and transformation. Each story has been a reminder that Jesus invites us all, no matter our questions or our doubts or our flaws, to come close and be changed by his words and his presence. Today, we step into a sacred scene where we'll explore three profound truths from the table that started it all. Here, we'll find that Jesus calls us to live as participants in his sacrificial love, shows us that greatness is found in humility and service, and prays for us, promising strength in our weakest moments. And as we join Jesus, and this time his disciples at the table, may we hear his call to a life of surrender, service, and trust. The table is set. The invitation is clear. Let's dine with Jesus just one more time and be transformed by his presence. So as we begin, I invite you to once again activate your imaginations and step into the scene and picture yourself there. Imagine the atmosphere in Jerusalem during the Passover. The city is bustling. Pilgrims have filled the streets and there's this sense of somberness that hangs in the air as families prepare for the Passover meal. The commemoration of God's deliverance of Israel from Egypt. But this Passover night is different for Jesus and his disciples. Jesus knows what's coming. His betrayal, his suffering, and his eventual death. This dinner also known as the Last Supper, is the final meal he will share with his closest friends, and every word he speaks is filled with weight and purpose. In light of that reality, I invite you to pause the video now, and whether you are on your own or whether you are in a neighborhood church today, I invite you to go and experience God's Word by reading Luke chapter 22, verses 7 to 38, and after you've finished reading, press play again, and we will dive in together. All right, welcome back. As Jesus and his disciples sit down for this sacred meal, Jesus takes some bread, he breaks it, and he gives thanks. And in verses 19 and 20, he tells them, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He then takes a cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed by my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. These words are absolutely striking. In speaking them, Jesus is actively redefining their understanding of the Passover. He is shifting the focus from a past deliverance in Egypt to a new deliverance through his own sacrifice. By offering his body and his blood, he initiates a new covenant, a promise of forgiveness, reconciliation, and of salvation. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote these words, When Christ calls a man 
or woman. He bids him come and die. The call to be a part of this new covenant is a call to participate in the sacrificial love of Jesus. It is an invitation to lay down our lives, our own desires, for the sake of something greater. That is the way of Jesus. The question is, are we living as participants in the covenant Jesus established? Are we willing to lay down our lives as he did? We may not always realize that we are called not only to remember his sacrifice, but to embody it. This moment of reminder is a reminder, rather, that following Jesus means a life of self-giving love. Okay. In verse 24, right in the middle of this solemn meal, a dispute breaks out among the disciples about who is the greatest. Classic disciples, right? We see that Jesus, in verse 26, responds by flipping their understanding of greatness on its head. He liked to do that. He says, those who are the greatest among you should take that lowest rank, take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. And then he points to himself, in verse 27, as the example saying, I am among you as one who serves. This is a reminder that in the kingdom of God, things are opposite to that of the world. Jesus' words and actions show that true leadership in the kingdom isn't about power or position, but about humility and service. Henry Nouwen captures this beautifully when he writes, Jesus calls us to be downwardly mobile. He calls us to follow him on his downward journey, the journey to the cross. So leadership in Jesus' eyes isn't about elevating ourselves. In fact, it's about lowering ourselves to serve others. Now, you may be thinking, well, look, I'm not a leader. But whether we realize it or not, everyone is leading someone. Yes, believe it or not, someone is following you. So, the question is, for all of us, do we seek to lead from a place of humility and service, or are we too caught up in our own status and recognition? Jesus calls us to this radical kind of leadership that chooses service over power. And if that's not a countercultural reality in our world today, I do not know what is. This week, perhaps you'd like to consider some ways that you can practice servant leadership in your relationships or in your family or in your workplace. Just think about it. Promise? Okay, deal. Now, as the meal comes to an end, Jesus turns to Peter and says these words. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Now, this part of the scene may not seem to fit but there's a great deal of truth here, however hard it might be to hear. You see, Jesus knows the trials and failures that are ahead for Peter and the disciples. Yet, he doesn't leave them hopeless. Instead, he reminds them that his intercession and grace will be with them even when they stumble, especially when they stumble. And this moment re reflects the, the comforting truth that Jesus prays for us, too. In his book, The Way of the Heart, Henry Nouwen writes, The tragedy of Christian life is that so many know the Bible and yet so few 
know Jesus. Jesus' desire is that we know him, relying on his strength and his grace in our times of weakness. In fact, our knowledge of Jesus is inextricably linked to our personal relationship with him, which is made manifest through a life of prayer, of connection with him at the deepest level of our being. And wrapped up in this knowing is all of our frailties and all of our failures and all of the ways that no one else knows us. And he still stands unwaveringly ready to restore us and to make us whole again, if we are willing. Are you willing? Are you willing to depend on Jesus' strength in your moments of trouble and testing, trusting that he intercedes for you? You know, Jesus does not promise a life free from trouble and trials, but he does promise to walk with us through them. So is there an area of struggle in your life that you need to just bring to Jesus, trusting in his prayer for you and in his grace to sustain you? These are good, good questions to ponder today and in the coming days. So, before we wrap up our time in the Word today, once again, allow me to suggest some invitations that I see here in the midst of this sacred scene. First, I see that we are invited to embrace the covenant through daily surrender. Jesus' new covenant is not this one-time event, but a daily commitment to follow him in self-sacrifice. After all, Jesus didn't simply say, take up your cross and follow me, but to do it daily. This week, as you spend some time in prayer, quiet time with God, ask him to help you surrender your own desires and your own will to him. Perhaps you want to reflect upon how you can live as a participant in this covenant, showing sacrificial love in your relationships and in your actions. Next, I see this clear invitation to practice servant leadership right where you are in your walking around everyday life. Jesus showed that true greatness is found in service. In fact, Matthew 20 and 28, Jesus says of himself, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So I encourage you and even challenge you to find some time this week to think of one way that you can serve those around you, whether it's through the giving of your time or your financial resources or the very gifts that are unique to you and you alone. I pray that you will make it a goal to practice servant leadership and follow Jesus example. Now, lastly, there is this invitation here to lean on Jesus in the times of testing. Just as Jesus prayed for Peter, he intercedes for each one of us in our moments of weakness. If you're facing a challenge, if you're facing a struggle, I want you to remember that Jesus knows about it and he is present with you in it. So maybe you want to spend some time in prayer, bringing those struggles before him and asking him for the strength by his spirit to carry you through. You don't have to face that alone. So as we conclude our time in the word today, 
I invite you to cling to the fact that the Last Supper was more than just a meal. It was the moment Jesus redefined our relationship with God. In that upper room, Jesus established a new covenant, a covenant not bound by rules, but by love and grace. He reminded us that true greatness is found in humble service. And he showed us that even in our times of weakness, he is praying for us, walking with us, and strengthening us along the way. So as we clue up this teaching series, and as we've spent um, some time with Jesus, dinner with him, having dinner with him, let's remember that this invitation is for everyone, for each and every one of us. We're invited to participate in this new covenant by living lives of sacrificial love. We're called to lead others through humble service. And we are assured that Jesus stands with us in every trial and tribulation. Let me remind you as we close today that the table of Jesus is perpetually set. And Jesus invites us to join him to be transformed by him, by his love. But not only that, he also calls us to go out and to live and to be his hands and feet and to invite others to take their place at his table, to join him in serving others in a world that is hungry for the hope that only he can provide. Won't you join me as we pray together in these moments? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the sacred invitation you extend to us. An invitation to sit at your table, to receive your love, to be transformed by your presence. As we reflect on the truths of the Last Supper, we are humbled by the depth of your sacrifice. You gave your body and shed your blood to establish a new covenant, a covenant of grace and forgiveness and eternal hope. Teach us, God, to live as participants in this covenant, surrendering our lives daily to your will and embodying your sacrificial love in all that we do. You have shown us, Lord, that greatness in your kingdom is found in humility and service. Help us to follow your example by leading with a servant heart, laying aside our own desires for the good of others. May our lives reflect the love and the grace we have received from you. And God, in our moments of weakness and testing, remind us that you are with us, interceding for us. Strengthen us to face the challenges before us, trusting in your grace to sustain us and your presence to guide us. And as we leave this teaching, this series, dinner with you, dinner with Jesus, may the lessons we've learned remain with us. Empower us to live as your hands and feet, bringing hope to a world in need. May we always return to your table, remembering your love and sharing it with others. We ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen.